one of the most powerful forces of transformation is knowledge. In fact, the scriptures say this power of knowledge is what distinguishes the human form from all the other forms of life. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. These bodily activities even the animals indulge in. It is this faculty of knowledge that God has bestowed upon us. He has not bestowed it upon the animals to the same extent. So in this human form, we need to utilize this faculty of knowledge. Not to eat, sleep, mate and defend in a deluxe manner but to utilize this to reach the ultimate goal of creation, the absolute truth, God-realization, enlightenment, nirvana, whatever you may call it. This necessity for spiritual knowledge is also felt because we are all unhappy. We wish to be happy, but at every turn in life we experience misery. We wish to be situated in wisdom, but we find ourselves besieged by doubts, confusion, ignorance. We wish to be eternal, but life brings us to dead end. We repeatedly experience the phenomenon of death as we move along. So our soul is yearning for that perfect experience. And to reach that perfect experience, we all perceive the need for knowledge. In fact, Sri Krishna says, referring to spiritual knowledge, he says, Arjun, there is nothing as pure in this world as true knowledge. And Ved Vyast eulogized knowledge to the extent that he said, the cause of all our miseries is lack of knowledge. And if somehow we can acquire proper knowledge, the root of our miseries will be uprooted. So where to get this divine knowledge from that has the solution to our problems and the key to our desirable attainments. This knowledge cannot be acquired from worldly people. You look around for wisdom, you consult your friends and relatives, or in office over a cup of tea you exchange wisdom that may amount to intellectual entertainment, but from the spiritual perspective, it has no value. The Vedas say, Andhe naiva niyamana yathandha. It is like the blind leading the blind. How then do we acquire real spiritual wisdom? from the Guru. But the problem is that right now, we don't have a Guru, many of us. 
How do you find a God-realized saint? It is not easy. There are God-realized saints from whom you can get knowledge. Ultimately, you will have to reach them, but initially the problem is how to find them. So we need another source of wisdom that is trustworthy, infallible, not subject to any defects of the human intellect. What is that? God himself. Why don't you get knowledge from God? Now there is no question of any doubt. Everybody intuitively feels human beings can make mistakes. God cannot make mistakes. But how do we get knowledge from God? This is the knowledge in his Vedas. These Vedas are not the name of a book. It is the oldest poetry in the world, some historian may declare. But that is an inaccurate statement. Don't say oldest. The Rig Veda contains eternal knowledge that was manifested by God in the heart of the firstborn Brahma. When he creates the world, he also gives us the guidebook. So that guidebook, his knowledge is the Vedas, Nishvasitamasya Veda. Just as God existed before creation, his knowledge also existed before creation. Just as God is eternal, his knowledge is also eternal. So the Vedas refer to the eternal knowledge of God. Hence, the Vedas, what they are teaching us, this science of God-realization, they don't actually give a name to it. The name Hinduism was given much later, few hundred years ago. The Vedas call it Sanatan Dharma, eternal religion, the eternal path. Non-sectarian, perfectly scientific. They deal with it as pure knowledge, not just a matter of cultural beliefs. 5,000 years ago, Ved Vyas, who was himself an avatar of God, he wrote down the Vedas, but he is never considered the author of the Vedas. So there was this one Veda which he divided into four parts, Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Sam Ved, Atharva Ved, and he got the name Ved Vyas. These Vedas are like a reservoir of perfect knowledge. And the Gyanupasana Kant of these Vedas is the Upanishads which scholars in the Western world have also read and praised as being beyond any kind of Western philosophy. So nevertheless, these Vedas are the reference point for spiritual wisdom. So any spiritual principle needs to be established on the basis of this authority. Bhutam bhavyam bhavishyancha sarvan vedat prasidhyati. That is the basis of credibility in our Vedic tradition. It's not that any saint comes and says anything from the mind. The listener has the right to question. Where is this described in the Vedas? If it is, it is credible. If not, it is rejectable. However, the problem is these Vedas are very difficult to understand. The Bhagavatam states that 
what to speak of human beings even the celestial devatas are unable to penetrate into the depths of their secrets so in order to explain the meaning of these vedas we have the 18 puranas these have been written by ved vyas these 18 puranas are not to be underestimated themselves they are revealing the meaning of the vedas the vedas are not read just by themselves they are read in the entire frame of all the vedic scriptures so along with the vedas we have got the six vedang what are these vedangs they assist us in studying the vedas shiksha kalp vyakaran nirukti chhand jyotish shiksha this has got the rules of mantra uchcharan kalp this has got the rules for the karma kand vyakaran is the grammar of the vedas nirukti is the dictionary of the vedas chhand has got the swar gyan the scales in which the mantras are enunciated jyotish is the astrological treatise these are called the vedang then you have the upaved these upavedas have material knowledge so the vedas say that when you live in the world you also need material knowledge and they give it the upaved of the rigved is the arthaved economic science the upaved of the yajurved is dhanurved military science so those are the scriptures that hitler is reputed to have stolen and taken to germany that is from where he got the swastik and then turned it around the upaved of the samaved is the gandharva ved which teaches musical science the upaved of the atharva ved is ayurved which is well known even today besides this we have the two itihas the mahabharat and the ramayan so these now mahabharat and ramayan although they are not manifested by god himself they are still highly respected why because god realized saints who had attained the divine realization by the inspiration of the lord they wrote them down hence we respect the ramayana and the mahabharat like we respect the vedas and then come these 18 puranas that i talked about after that come the shad darshan there were six rishis or great sages who wrote six theses on philosophy that became exceedingly popular in the indian philosophic tradition so maharshi jaimini wrote the mimamsa darshan in which he described the whole set of rituals etc maharshi ved vyas wrote the vedanta darshan in which he gave pure knowledge revealing the meaning the conclusion of the vedas maharshi gautam wrote nyaya darshan where he described systems of logic for philosophic thought maharshi kanad wrote the vaisheshik darshan even modern science recognizes him now as the discoverer of the atom maharshi kapil wrote the sankhya darshan system of analysis of the different elements of creation and maharshi patanjali whose text is very popular now he wrote the yoga darshan apart from this come the 100 smriti granth like manusmriti 
Similarly, there's Parashar Smriti, Yagyavalkya Smriti, Vishnu Smriti, etc. So these are describing codes of conduct for human beings and society. Then there are Nibans. So these are like PhD theses written by sages. There are thousands of Nibans. This is the tradition, the parampara of scriptures that is starting from Narayan. Now, how to access this ocean of knowledge? There is one scripture which holds the key. And that is the Bhagavad Gita which is in your hands. Bhagavad means, what does Bhagavad mean? God. Gita? Song. So Bhagavad Gita means song of God. Why is it a song of God? Tell me. Because it is sung by the Lord himself. Shri Krishna, he created this scenario that we will talk about and gave knowledge to Arjun. Actually, Arjun was an instrument. He wished to give the knowledge to all of us. So this dialogue between Arjun and Shri Krishna, which spreads over 700 verses, is the Bhagavad Gita. And Veda Vyas who was a dissension of God to write the scriptures, he saw this entire dialogue taking place. And later on, when he wrote the Mahabharat, he included the Bhagavad Gita in this Mahabharat. So in one sense, the Bhagavad Gita is a part of the Itihas. In the other sense, It is spoken by the Lord himself. So it is respected like the Vedas and it is often called Gita Upanishad. The Upanishad called the Gita. And Sri Krishna in the Gita refers to the Upanishads. He says, Sarvo Upanishad Gavo Dogdha Gopalanandana Arjun. I am like the milkman. These Upanishads are like that wish-fulfilling cow, Kamadhenu. From all these Upanishads, I have milked that knowledge and I am giving it to you in the form of the Bhagavad Gita. So this Bhagavad Gita contains a summary of all these scriptures. The six schools of philosophy which I mentioned, Mimansa, Vedan, Nyay, Vaisheshik, Sankhya, Yog, they are all contained in the Bhagavad Gita. That is why it is so highly respected. It has been translated in every language of the world. 